So today, we're talking about what's in our action camera bag. And obviously it may be a bit overwhelming. We do this for a living, so there's a lot in our action camera bag. Um, but today we wanna to talk cameras, we wanna talk accessories, we wanna talk things that we use all the time versus things that we do not use yeah. and that we do not suggest you invest in. So we're gonna to try to be as transparent as we possibly can. And there's a lot to go through, so. And as always, if you have questions, feel free to just drop them in the comment section below and we'll do our best to get back to them answer them, provide you with our opinion. Again, a lot of people that are trolling um, YouTube are looking for opinions. So we're just throwing one out there. Take this with a grain of salt or jump in the description and buy the products as you see fit. Disclaimer, most of the products that are linked in the description are affiliated, which means it's no added cost to you. But if you do choose to buy them, they will give us a small commission and kickback. Let's get stuck into it. <laughs> Got a bunch of cameras on the table, 360, regular, <laughs> one inch, they're all here. Let's chat through which ones we use and which ones we don't use. All right, so this year specifically, I'd say we mostly used the GoPro Hero 9 because we didn't have the 10 back then. We only got the 10 a couple, well, it's almost been six months already, so. Yeah, yeah. September, mm -hmm. well, September. GoPro 9 and GoPro 10 definitely are at the top of the list. But that being said, we shot a lot of Insta360 this year. And if you've seen any of our recent travel films, they have been shot with most of the Insta360 cameras that are on this table. Um, we're linking the Morocco film right up there in the cards <laughs> if you hadn't had the chance to watch it. Um, but yeah, talk us through the Insta360. <sighs> this year we were fortunate to make three travel films, one in Morocco, one in Sicily, and one in the Maldives, which was amazing. Two of which were captured on the Insta360 ONE-R, and one was captured on the Insta360 GO 2. Um, Mighty GO 2. Brand new action camera. <laughs> Chatting through, I guess, the setup and the way that we've been fortunate to use these tools, we, each time we're using the Insta360 ONE-R, we're always focusing on, on well, the one inch and the 360 mod, mm -hmm. but we're, we're always focusing on two perspectives. We're never just shooting with this camera, I guess, just as it, as it, uh, as the 4K mod. That's probably the mod that we use least. And I would go, I would recommend that if you are looking to get the Insta360 ONE R, definitely start with the 360 mod or get the expert edition. The expert edition uh, essentially has the one inch sensor, the one inch mod, and also the 360 mod. So these are the ones we use the most, I think because we've had the best results with them simply. I think the 4K mod we haven't been particularly impressed with, um, but that being said, the one inch, especially when you're trying to do cinematic, um, cinematic action camera content, then this is definitely a, a go-to. Yeah, and you know, when we say cinematic, I mean, that's super subjective. I've had a lot of criticism on videos and like, where people are like, you, <laughs> you know- You can't make- <laughs> Action camera content cinematic. I mean, we believe we can. So <laughs> in our opinion, there's ways that we think we've been able to use these cameras to create cinematic content. Um, something, I guess, downsides to this, like something that you probably might not be acquainted with or something that you might be interested to know is that when you are using the one inch sensor, there is a 90 centimeter um, focused range, which means you have to be 90 centimeters away from the camera lens for- At least 90 centimeters. Essentially, if you're any closer, then it's not gonna being focused. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's something that you, I mean, we take into consideration, like we don't use this as a vlog camera for that particular reason. Like if you're mm -hmm. holding the camera close to you, you are out of focus. Another downside I would say to this camera is the fact that it only has one screen. It's modular though, so you could flip the screen if you were to do um, vlogging with it. Um, but having only one screen on one side can sometimes be a bit frustrating if you're trying to mm -hmm. um, just be a bit more efficient, I guess. Whereas um, obviously the Hero 10 has the back panel and the front panel as well. So that's one thing to keep in mind, depending on the use you do of it. I mean, being honest, when it comes to like our use case of like the Hero of say the Go 2, mm -hmm. this camera we use, we barely use. Mm -hmm. Like we've used it in travel showcases to mm -hmm. showcase exactly how powerful it is and what it's capable of. But when you compare the go-to to something like the 
into the 361R or the GoPro Hero 10. You just have way less variety and way, it's like, it's like a toy in comparison, mm -hmm. you know? I guess what I mean by that specifically is that like you can only capture 1440p um, resolution. You mm -hmm. can't capture 4K or 5K image resolution. You don't have the ability to capture 360 content. You don't have an SD card. There's a range of... <laughs> but in its defense, I will say in its defense, I really, really love the pro video mode. That mm -hmm. is something that I find is such a good amazing tool. Essentially what it does is that the camera when it records in pro video is recording a sphere. And so you can digitally crop in essentially in post-production and you can choose whether you're having the same shot either in 16.9, in 9x16 or 1-1 one, 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 square. Yeah, any ratio essentially that's used for social media or used in general in life, um, you can reframe in post-production. And I find that to be extremely useful. Please excuse my voice, <laughs> I'm a little sick. I might as well tell you now in case you haven't noticed, but I'm powering through, so. The other pro, I guess, to this mighty Insta360 Go 2 is Insta360 have done an amazing job with the color science. Mm -hmm. Something I, I really, I guess, praise Insta360 for in the release of this product. I think the color science on the Go 2 is actually better than the 1R. I agree. We have had such better results in color grading this footage than we have had with shooting on the 1R. We find that sometimes if we shoot on the 1 inch, the color can be, it makes the skin tones really white. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have as natural um, tones and and so for those of you that are looking for mobile first content, you just want to shoot content on say an action camera and then you want to create some edits on your mobile, that's where a product like this does shine. Mm -hmm. However, all these other products can also do that. So that's why we use this the least. Um, anything else to chat through about action uh, cameras, 360 maybe? Yeah, let's chat okay. 360. I mean, 360 is something that we use more and more, I feel like. Mm -hmm. We're finding so much enjoyment out of learning how to reframe, I think, the clips and the sort of versatility that a 360 camera has. The exact model of 360 camera I think we've used the most this year is probably the 1R. Mm -hmm. However, we have also made a lot of videos with the 1X2. Um, comparing these two, if you were to be like, which one would you get? I would get the 1R over the 1X2 just because it has this ability to have other lenses. This modular setup is a much more well-rounded like purchase than just that. However, that being said, if you have if a- If you're only doing 360 content, however, I would actually suggest to buy this one yeah. because I prefer the color side. One of the areas of 360 that we've also had a lot of fun with this year is using it as a point of view camera. So. Mm -hmm you know, using this as a super wide angle lens and using it as a bite mount or something which is mounted to your head. <laughs> the results can be so interesting. Like the chin man. <laughs> <laughs> when you when you put a bite mount on this, it reframes your chin. It's like, oh, you can see an example right here. Yeah. So, but we've had a lot of fun with like, I guess, playing around with perspectives. Uh, that's what we love about creating action camera content. It's why these tools are all here. To wrap up um, the camera section, like if you were to just get one camera, which one would you get? Oh, <laughs> contentious. Yeah. Um, You're on a budget. I'm on a budget? Yeah. I might get the expert edition just because I really enjoy 360 and I've enjoyed 360 more and more um, this year. So that would be my pick, but that's purely because I get two cameras in one and I'm cheap. So. <laughs> I would get the GoPro Hero 10. Um, looking at price, I think at the moment it is the cheapest that does avoid this, you know, the that, that does eliminate the ability to shoot 360. Mm. You cannot shoot 360 content on just uh, regular. You cannot get the invisible selfie stick effect <laughs> <laughs> on the Hero 10. Sorry, no. I get this question a lot. It's not possible. Yeah, but it is a really versatile camera and something that I think as a vlogger, someone who likes talking to camera and recording mm. pieces to camera, the audio quality of the GoPro is better than the Insta360 ONE R. They've done a really good job with the audio pickup. It sounds better. It's cleaner. Um, it's just a better, it's a better audio recording in cam just in camera. So that would be my pick. That would be Anna's pick. That's the camera section.
right, one of the most commonly asked questions that I think we get in DMs is like, if you were to get one or two accessories, I've just got a new action camera, I'm looking to get one or two accessories, don't have a big budget, what should I get? Take it away. <laughs> right, number one, I would get a dome, but that's because I just really love the 50-50 perspective. I mm -hmm. think it's so interesting. And it's something that is hard to achieve with any other cameras because if you were to do that with a DSLR or a mirrorless and you'd need a housing, uh, which are really expensive. So I think a dome for me would be number one. Number two would be a good selfie stick. I think that's paramount to the success of your action camera content. You mm -hmm. need to have a good selfie stick, one that you're comfortable using and that is um, easy to use. What are your thoughts on this one? Is this <laughs> a good like, one? No, I hate it. I don't understand it. I still don't understand it to this day. I'm always like pulling it. Jake hates when I pull things and they're not supposed to be pulled. You See? will, yeah, there's a, you're supposed to twist it here so it loosens. And... Uh, uh -huh. Okay, <laughs> what are your thoughts on this one? I don't like it. <laughs> you I don't like it either. I certainly also dislike it's it. It's just weird. It's too. flimsy, it's like... The this... plastic quality is not good. It's not good. So we definitely don't recommend this GoPro three-way selfie stick. It's just, it's janky and clunky and... Oh, number three though. Which? I haven't mentioned my number three. Oh. That's my number three, a bite mount. Yeah. Because I also love that perspective and it's really easy to do with an action camera and it's really cheap. I mean, it's this little piece of plastic. So those are my top three. I think that's the, the perfect beginner kit. Um, touching on- This was not playing. <laughs> no, touching on selfie sticks, regardless of the pro camera product that you're buying, um, as in the brand, I think a sturdy 90 centimeter or a meter selfie stick is paramount. Like, so for example, this one is just under, it's like 70 centimeters. Oh, not good. <laughs> <laughs> well, the reason why you want it slightly longer is because when you want that wider angle perspective and when you're swimming or snorkeling or even selfieing at a beautiful mountain or Dangerous. swinging, <laughs> You want to be able to, you want the camera to be far enough away from you to put yourself in the perspective and mm. Yeah, and experiment with it. We experiment with it all the time where we have the camera selfie stick short as short as possible, but also as long as possible. You could even go to the length of your shooting 360 content of getting a three meter selfie stick. Mm -hmm. Then what is your all-time favorite selfie stick? Were you to only choose one? Were I to only choose one, what I will say is of the last few years, the selfie stick that has lasted me the longest and mm -hmm. the sturdiest has been the GoPro El Grande. I've pretty much recommended that selfie stick in every YouTube video. It is linked in the description of this one so you can pick one up right away. I really love how GoPro incorporated this same ball and socket mount, which means if you have another accessory, comsa, like this, um, you can just clip it in um, it's also just a, unfortunately we don't have it here with us. It's because in, we have three helms at it, the moment. So. We're, we're drifting at the moment, but, um, yeah, it's, it's just sturdy. It's long. It extends to like 180 centimeters and it's just, it's just good. It's, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so that would be my, my pick of a selfie stick, but Anna's exactly right. I would get a good selfie stick. I would get a bite mount and a dome top three action camera accessories right there. Let's have a chat about some of the things that we also have in our camera bag that we probably, we use and we find a lot of function in mm -hmm. and then stuff that we just don't see any point in getting and we would tell you like, we just don't use this, so. I'd say this one we use quite frequently and is one that comes with us on most of our trips. It's a suction cap, easy as that, and it's really good for mounting on cars or anything that is Boats. Bit, yeah, boats. Um, Mountain, uh, quad bikes. Quad bikes. Yeah, heaps of stuff. Subs. I just remembered in Sicily when we were trying yeah, to mount it we, on the board well, and it was wet. <laughs> God. What we ended up doing, if you're mounting to anything in the water, we would also recommend putting some kind of floating device with mm -hmm. the mount. Mm -hmm. So if it does happen to fall off, you catch a wave, it falls off, at least the camera is floating and it's not at the bottom of the ocean. Um, unfortunately, we don't have any floaties to show you, but... Because we don't use them. Because <laughs> we're cheap. We, but we would recommend... we tied I, a string to it that connected to the We sub. borrowed the guys. Oh, we borrowed we the string. We borrowed a floating from the guy at the sub renting place. So we would recommend like this suction cap mount mm -hmm. adversely or alternatively 
um, just sticky mounts. These 3M sticky mounts, mm -hmm. very like they come in hand. Mm -hmm. We use Definitely. them all the time, mounting on helmets, mounting on motorbikes, mounting on anything. I hate that they're not replaceable though. I will say it is such a waste of plastic. So I'm not a fan of those. Mm. I'd much rather use the suction cap if possible. That is also because it's reusable and it's important to remember that these are having an impact on the planet. Yeah, I mean, one thing you can do is you can replace the whole 3M sticky bit. Mm -hmm. um, however, what I've been doing, specifically like this one, I find this one really good because it's got the, it's got the like three mil screw mount mm -hmm. on it. I've just sort of, I've kind of been gifting these to tour operators. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like if I put one on their board or helmet or I just gift it to them and you know, they find use with other clients and customers that book their services so it's been you know a little present but <laughs> um moving on from i guess mounts um one mm. one yeah. more mount okay mm -hmm. tell this us about it <laughs> tell us about it take it away um this one's a double mount i don't know if it has a name it's from ulanzi mm -hmm. and so what you can do is actually mount two cameras side by side and since we're shooting a lot of action camera content i think we're always interested in seeing how different cameras perform in different environments or sometimes we're even mounting the same camera let's say we have two gopros with different frame rates so we can cut between the two cameras and the different frame rates so i think this mount has um lot of use yeah. and i mean that's sort of the mount that got us the go for a million dollar challenge this year so thank you yeah. for this mount for those of you that are fortunate to have you know more than one action camera um, or likewise testing action cameras side by side in this particular example we had the gopro hero 10 with the gopro uh, with the insta 360 one inch we had found this incredible content creator in Morocco and we'd organized to spend an afternoon shooting some horse content with him. Shout out to Yassine. Um, if you are interested, definitely check out the link in the description um, and check out some of his work. And so we had dual mounted the one inch with the GoPro Hero 10 next to each other. We knew that in this instance, we wouldn't have that many opportunities because we wanted to get the most perfect light with a horse running along the beach at sunset. It was like one or two takes. We so had two, I think. <laughs> we did we had two before the light wasn't as good and before that moment was over. So what ways that we believe to maximize moments is to use a dual mount and to have two cameras rolling at the same time so that you know if one of them you're shooting in 5K 60 frames a second, the other one you're shooting 4K 120, you know between those two cameras, you hopefully will get something awesome. And we did. And we did. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so definitely a, a mount that we recommend is dual mounting, um, you know, fleeting moments. Mm -hmm. um, move, continuing on with the GoPro. Yeah. We haven't used the um, Max Lens Mod yet with the updated uh, firmware on the Hero 10. However, we used it a bunch with the GoPro Hero 9 and found a lot of great use cases, specifically for shooting point of view content, um, anything that we shot with the bite mount, um, selfies. Yeah, selfies, like that kind of stuff. Um, also the horizon lock. If you are doing action sports, you're mounting to a vehicle and you want to lock the horizon, whack on the, um, the this mod and you will be able to lock horizon on the GoPro. Um, you can do that on the Insta360. If you have the Insta360, you can do that on the Go2. You can do that on 360 cameras like the GoPro Max um, and the One X2. So let's talk about one of our most frequently asked questions though, and that's in regards to ND filters. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we have them. Yeah, we yeah. We never use them. Um, yeah, ND filters. We do get a lot of questions on whether we use them. Um, we've tried, I mean, we've given it our best shot, but we've just never been really impressed with the results. Mm -hmm. I find that there's a lot of banding in the sky when I use it, and I'm not sure if it's the fact that we're using it wrong. Obviously, I use ND filters all the time when I'm shooting mirrorless, but I'm comfortable with those, and somehow the ones on the GoPro or even the Insta360 just don't render the best results. I mean, and that's probably why we haven't used them as much because mm -hmm. the times that we have used them, we've re we've checked the footage and we haven't been impressed with it. So we've just mm -hmm. gone back to using the camera sensor itself and just adjusting the settings on the camera mm -hmm. for the lighting conditions that are appropriate. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, in terms of GoPro specific ND filters, we rarely ever use it. That means we never use it. As in, do <laughs> As we, in even we don't have, even know. We don't we even don't, own them. We don't, so, we don't have them. I mean, I, had, I have used them on other models of GoPro, but since mm -hmm. upgrading to GoPro Hero 9, I've not used a single ND filter on a GoPro. Um, I guess- I, We're very much of the philosophy that less is more. Yeah. Like, if we're able to capture something without the use of external tools, better for us. I yeah. think we don't like wearing ourselves down with so much tech and being so nitty gritty in the specifics of the tech. It's just about, I mean, these cameras are meant to have fun. They're yeah. not meant to be a headache. I mean, mirrorless are really complicated to use, but you, this is not the case, you know? It's a, it's a GoPro. You're supposed to turn it on and be able to shoot something amazing almost right off the bat. Mm -hmm. So I'd say like, again, less is more. Yeah, and one thing that we would say, I reckon is like, we put more emphasis on actually analyzing the light and the mm, moment the environment the yeah. environment then we do worrying about like setting the camera up for the you know for because it's overcast or because it's super blurry super bright or mm -hmm, we definitely like we won't shoot on a cloudy day if we're on a shoot and we have the luxury of you know having many days to shoot something um but yeah focusing on the environment is something that we'll prioritize over finding the perfect yeah find like like using ND filters, for example. Um, lastly, one little hack that we want to talk about in regards to accessories would be using magnifying lenses. Oh yeah. Where so is this is something that we experimented with, with our Morocco film. And it's the first time we have ever used something like this. Um, and basically Very good this is a kit of four different strengths of magnifying glass. And simply all we did was we took one of these magnifying glass. I think we used the... What's the brand? The 10 Vindicator. times. The 10 times or the... We used both. The four, I think. And they're not even meant for this camera, are they? No. So these are not even designed for the Insta360. What we did is we just stuck the magnifying lens on top. We just got some... Tape. Electrical tape and stuck it on top. And that's how we were able to create depth of field. Mm -hmm. Basically, all this is doing is it's like making the background blurry because it's magnifying in on the certain focal point. The difficult part with using magnifying lenses on action cameras is you have no idea of where the focal point really is. It's really hard to find. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really hard. There's no autofocus on an action camera, obviously. Yeah. So you're the autofocus and you're looking at this tiny screen, which gives you little information. So it's a challenge, but when you do get it, the results are really cool. Yeah. I like the opening shots in our Morocco film, we shot mm -hmm. with magnifying. The boot in the sand. Yeah, yeah. these kind of things. And they do look like you know, iPhone or DSLR content. Mm -hmm. It really does give another dynamic to the content. And it is something that I think, you know, was fun experimenting with. Not something that we would do all the time, but something we specifically wanted to experiment with. <laughs> Wrapping up, we are going to talk about the things that we don't use and we don't suggest you invest in. And again, that's our perspective, our opinion. Um, that's fine if you have another. Yeah. We'll share ours. First thing that I guess we would just steer clear of would be a gimbal. Like, it's something that we never use. With um, action cameras. With action cameras, yes. Mm -hmm. Definitely if you have a mirrorless or, you know, a point and shoot and you're wanting smoother footage, then yeah, look into it. But in terms of action cameras, hyper smooth, post-production software is so good. Like, Real Steady Go for GoPro um, or even Flow State with Insta360 in studio, you can get the best results without using... Rock Steady on the DJI. Rock Steady on DJI. They all have a weird name. <laughs> but we, I just don't recommend any sort of gimbal. Like, like when we shoot, if we want to shoot something smooth, we put hyper smooth on and we walk as still as possible. Like we're not shaking the camera and we're not being wild. We're trying to be smooth, but we're also not needing to go to the extra extent where we're holding an electronic gimbal, you know, or even like there's some other gimbals which you can get, which I just think- These that, are just marketing gimmicks. Yeah. Like people are just trying to sell you more stuff, making you think that you actually need them. But the reality is that these cameras are pretty damn stable already. So yeah. really- If you're getting janky, shaky footage, then- Just review your technique. Yeah, review how you're <laughs> shooting. <laughs> um, the next thing that we really don't use are like media mods or like 
audio accessories for mm -hmm. action cameras. Um, this one's for the Hero 8, right? Th this one's for the Hero 8, and mm -hmm. this is the last one that we had that, yeah, you know, that we, we haven't used. haven't upgraded since because mm -hmm. if we're filming a vlog, I think the beauty of, of having this camera on you is just grabbing it, turning it on, and away you go, recording. Yeah. Like, that is what makes that is what makes the actual editing process and the whole turnaround process of producing content as a content creator fun mm -hmm. it's not worrying too much about oh my god this thing sounds well <laughs> if you can't hear it it's a problem but yeah also sleeves for example is another thing that i wanted to mention it's just another piece of plastic that people are making you think you might need you don't it's these cameras are rugged by definition and it's not a piece of silicone that's going to make much of a difference yeah. so don't worry about these things. And yes, these have come up in previous videos that I've shown. And I have pretty much, I would say I would own pretty much every GoPro accessory. And that's why I think this video is important to talk about things that just aren't being used. Um, so yeah, I mean, if we're recording, you know, what I would recommend doing is if you are looking to record more sit down content, invest in a podcasting mic, invest in a large diaphragm condenser microphone, 100, 200 bucks that plugs in via USB and you record into GarageBand. That's going to get you better audio for these types of videos when you're outside, you know, filming vlogs and things like that. Sure, that might be something that you invest in because you do want to address the wind, um, you know, but yeah, for our p purpose, we just try and avoid when it is windy or we just listen to the take and then if it's too windy, we record again. Yeah, you also have to think of the direction of the wind. There's always a place that's gonna be sort of shaded from the wind where you can stand and get mm. less impact on the shot. But yeah, essentially less is more. Yeah, so hope this has been, I hope this has answered some of the burning questions that you guys have in regards to- Burning? <laughs> yeah. Are you burning? Um, well, or just questions that you've had in regards to the gear that we use, how we use it. Um, if you are interested in learning more, definitely check out our Action Camera Masterclass. Uh, we're going live again with the class in 2000 and in about March next year. Yep, and it's also gonna be on demand very soon, and that's more than like 10 hours of us chatting to you about how to take your skills to the next level. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you've had an awesome 2021. Thank you for joining us this year. We're looking forward to making more action camera content for you next year. That's right, get ready. See you guys in the next upload. Peace. Peace. <laughs>